some of the opinions uh, on the Russia-Ukraine conflict that have been going on the British press, or and in the Western press in general, have just been the, the worst fucking takes you could possibly imagine. What the, the problem is, is right, is what this conflict has done, what this conflict has done is it, it has it exposed the West for its innate pick and choose racism that they engage in. Like, of course, everyone should care about the plight of Ukraine right now. 100%. The, what's going on is an absolute travesty. Putin's imperial desire for additional land and to be able to control the geopolitical sphere um, is rancid. And everyone should be, you know, in favour of you know, protecting the Ukraine from, or the, you know, the the well-being of the city, the citizens of Ukraine as you know, shells are being indiscriminately fired into residential areas um, under the guise of denazification of Ukraine, right? Everyone, everyone should be, um, should be, you should you feel pain for what's happening to the citizens of Ukraine right now, 100%. But it strikes me uh, as incredibly telling that these same portions of the Western media, they didn't care about when it was the children in Syria getting bombed. They didn't care when it was the children of Afghanistan being, being bombed. They didn't care when it was the children of Iraq being bombed. And they don't care about the children of Yemen being bombed or the children in Palestine being bombed. It's funny how as soon as people with white skin are involved, suddenly you really care. And as I said, you should absolutely care about the UK and Ukraine crisis and what's happening to citizens of Ukraine, as, you well, as well you should. 100% it is absolutely a travesty. But if you care, if you generally are supposed to have some kind of humanitarian care for you know, the invasions and occupations going on inside, the, inside Ukraine at the moment, then that same level of care should be, should be you know, dished out towards the, the, the inhabitants of Gaza or the inhabitants of Yemen. And it's not like that we, you know, we sold weapons to Saudi Arabia to engage in the war crimes that they've been doing in, in Yemen at, the, at this time, right? It's not like, it's not like we are enti entirely complicit in what is going on. Because we are entirely complicit. Exactly, but who else Putin's mum is going to have us, right? But, like, it is, it's incredibly telling that the media are happy to report about, you know, how, you know, oh, think of the children when it comes to Ukraine, as, as well they should. Yet when it comes to Palestine, it's, it's all, you know, got to bomb something, right? So it's just the, the rank racist hypocrisy. That as soon as someone, you know, someone with white skin is getting bombed, suddenly it's this big issue. Because it is a big issue, but, you know, that's why people on the left have been decrying the occupation of Palestine. They've been decrying the bombing of Yemen. They've been, you know, decrying the incursions into Iraq and Afghanistan for the last 20 fucking years, right? So hypocritical. And then, every so often, every so often, people will just say the quiet part out loud. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you know, let me find, um, there's a Twitter account, my favourite Twitter account, <laughs> it's, just, it's, just, it's just called Black Lives Matter, uh, it's, it's the title of the actual thing itself, yet what they do is they call out um, four centrist takes uh, on the Bird app, and they've been kind of compiling a bunch of incredibly awful takes, um, and the mask off moments from the Western press on these issues, so let's let's bring up this first one. has happened to now the unthinkable has happened to them and this is not a developing third world Why is nation that so quiet? this is europe it's robert moore here in i can really hear that one that was quite quiet i mean someone's recorded that on their screen but you can you can tell from the text there this is not a developing third world nation which is fine when they get bombed but it's Europe. Oh no, Europe's getting bombed. Now, oh no, it's all sad that they're getting bombed. And it's not just some other place in, in Asia that we don't have to fucking care about, right? Uh, let me find some more of them. There we go. As I see, European people with blue eyes and blonde hair being killed, children being killed every day with Putin's missiles and his helicopters and his rockets. And so, of course, I, I understand and respect the emotion. What you are outlining there is this tension between longer-term efforts to apply pressure to Vladimir Putin, such as financial se sanctions, and the very immediate military threat. Which... for it. European people with blonde hair and blonde... Why should, why should the colour of the skin on the uh, matter when it comes to who's being bombed? Surely we should care about everybody, right? Surely.
and you look at these you look at these other takes here like what makes it so shocking it's a european country it's people who watch netflix and have instagram and vote in free elections like like there's not you know free elections across the arab world or free elections in fucking botswana or places like that or places in you know, places outside of europe there are plenty of free and fair elections that go on in non-white countries i don't know why they seem to have this blanket idea that anyone who doesn't exist in europe or or you know or the or the americas somehow everywhere else just doesn't have free elections everyone's just a diplomatic sham but it's so it's so like blatantly mask off racism at this point Exactly, absolutely true, Limo. The sooner everyone thinks of people who inhabit this planet as humans, the better. You're absolutely true. Hundred percent true. And Yukimoto, you're right, absolutely. I hope the Ukrainians do rise up against imperialism. I mean, obviously as many diplomatic steps as we can should be taken to try and ensure the safety of the of the citizens of Ukraine. But if those diplomatic talks fail, you know, they have to repel the Russians somehow, which is very sad. Um But we shouldn't be engaging in NATO shouldn't be engaging in some kind of um, conflict on their grounds to try and remove Russia because that could lead to you know incredibly poor consequences that could escalate out of control. But again, I'm not trying to talk about the specifics of the the war itself because I don't know enough and I don't want to make any you know overarching takes specifically because I don't know enough. I'm not good at war politics to be able to make proper prescriptions about what should or shouldn't be done. To prevent casualties, right? I'm not going to try and make any claims because I'm not good. I don't know enough. I'm I'm going to be hands up, hand in my head, hands on heart. I do not know enough about these things to make proper points about them uh, to elucidate any further. But I am going to talk about things that I do know about, which is that you know bombs are bad, despite whether they hit brown people or white people. Simple as that. War is no some no no longer something visited upon impoverished and remote populations. It can happen to anybody. Yeah, true, it can. It's almost like it's bad when it happens to the impoverished and remote at all. It's just so mask off. It's just so mask off. There's even this guy on fucking CBS News. Let me find a fucking clip of it. I can't find the clip, but that's incredibly frustrating. Carl Jar, let me find this person's account. If I could spell properly, that would help. I worry in my uneducated view that somehow soon this is all the start of World War Two. I mean it's I don't think it's gonna engage in what's gonna happen as anything. I don't think we're gonna engage in any more um as long as NATO keep their own troops out, I don't see it escalating further. But again, I can't make any proper prescriptions about that at all. Yeah, true. Like, there should be a further campaign for nuclear disarmament. But we're, we're past that point now. What we need to do is make sure we can engage in de-escalation. Well, just listen to this fucking shit. Listen to this shit. With the Russians marching in, it's changed uh, the calculus entirely. Uh, tens of thousands of people have tried to uh, flee the city. There will be many more. People are hiding out in bomb shelters. But this isn't a place, with all due respect, um, you know, like Iraq or Afghanistan that has seen conflict raging for decades. You know, this is a relatively civilized, uh, relatively European, I have to choose those. Yeah, literally, these fucking, these racist pieces of shit think that Iraq and Afghanistan just aren't civilised, so it's okay if we bomb them. It's not an issue. Like, but now it's all a fucking crisis because white people are being bombed. That's literally, that's literally what this is saying right now. But it's incredible. Like, the racism, like, the, not only are we getting racism from, like, the reporting of, you know, what particular wars we should or shouldn't care about, how about we should care about all, fucking all of them, about how every single person's life lost, whether they are Ukrainian or whether they're Iraqi or whether they're, whether they're Afghan or whether they're Ye Yemeni. These are all lives that should have been saved. These are all things that should have been tried to be avoided. These are all things where we shouldn't be selling arms to fucking Saudi Arabia to engage in the war crimes in Yemen that they're engaging in right now. None of these things can shut right? But the way they pick and choose based off the skin colour of people, it's fucking repugnant. It's, re it's revolting. And not only that, we get, not only are we getting that those issues about, you know, what, you know, the, the skin colour of the people that we bomb or whether or not it should be an issue or not. The refugees 
that we're accepting from Ukraine, which we absolutely should be doing, or at least most European countries are doing. The UK is not accepting refugees from Ukraine because we, we're, we're so racist, we even hate other white people for being different white people because the gutter press fucking despise Eastern Europeans, right? Um, because obviously the UK is being difficult with giving visas out, which is unreal to me. It's absolutely unreal. But even the border countries to Ukraine, places like Poland, they're not letting African or, or Middle Eastern people across the border for relative safety, right? That's the racism that the, the people are engaging in there too, in which the refugees coming from Iraq and Afghanistan and Syria, these people aren't okay. But as soon as white refugees come, now it's, now it's okay, because obviously Poland is real fucking racist as well, right? And also homophobic, but that's a story for a different time. Whereas the UK is so racist, is so racist. We won't even we hate we won't let refugees in from Iraq or Afghanistan, and we won't even even let in ref refugees from Ukraine either. Although to be fair, you look at the you look at the um you look at the the actual polling of the people in the UK. They're far more happy to let refugees in from Ukraine than from Iraq, Afghanistan, and Syria because they're also incredibly racist, more racist about that too. But the government themselves are so racist that they they don't even want to let in they don't even want to let in Ukrainians either. All lives matter until brown people are in the firing line. True. You know, white people can't white people can't be terrorists, that is true. Doesn't matter how many MPs they kill. You can't have white terrorists. You just have deranged men. You just have yeah. <laughs> it's uh, it's absolutely unreal to me. The what the like the level to which people are just are being just, like the completely mask off. It's just not, not a single care. About the things or not that they're, the things that they're saying with regards to this, yeah, it's the fucking Family Guy meme. It's literally the Family Guy meme, where they hold up the fucking sign. Let me see if there are replies on this on this uh Joe Skeeping post, who's absolutely fucking based. You should go, you should go follow Joe Skeeping. He's um the Breakthrough Party. He is a uh uh the communications director for them, which is sick. Uh, like a Dem sock party in the UK. They're pretty sick. Um, and he's like based in Mark's Pill. You should definitely go drop him a follow. Let's see, I hope I really hope someone's responded with the um with the uh, the Peter Griffin meme. Oh, they've not. That's sad. But it's literally that Peter Griffin meme where they hold up the sign, like the Dulux color chart, where you know it's at the top where people are white or olive skin. Then they're refuge. Then they're, then they're acceptable refugees. But if they're below and they're brown or black, they that they have to be stopped at the border. Thank you, Lee. Much appreciated. I'm glad you're dropping in on the Twitch stream. Good to see you here. Oh, it just drives me around the fucking bend. Uh, Ryan Serbity really said this with a soul chest. The only way that you can have sympathy for someone if if they look like you. You're a racist. <laughs> Get me out of this country now. It's pathetic. That's so true. Let me listen. Let me listen to this clip. Fucking hell. And every time I see people fleeing or with their bags trying to get on buses to wherever they can go, I kept think thinking they all look like us. They all look like our neighbours. They look like us. They and that's not meant to be anything but a, a fair response to what I saw on my couch watching it all. Just going, they look. That could be anyone I work with, or I. Yeah, exactly. I look at the people in Palestine and think that could be fucking me, right, Ryan? People in Palestine could be, people in Yemen could be fucking me. Just because they have different skin colour doesn't mean that they can't be fucking me, right? I could have been born in an alt. I could have. Uh, the circumstance of my birth could have been way different, and I could have been, you know, this could have happened to me. Just because of their skin colour is different doesn't mean that I don't show, like, a shred of empathy with them. Jesus fucking Christ. Buy things off in my local shop or yeah. could be related to. It just feels so real and so visceral. And so awful. It just shows, like, how these people are, like, these people are just fucking empathy vacuums. And that they've just been, we've had 20 years of human cruelty been going on with Western interventionism in the Middle East. Um, that, and um, in Afghanistan, and places like that, in, you know, in uh, the Arab world. We've, in, we've intervened so often, and they did nothing, like, shred of care. But as soon as it's on their own shores and it's white people, suddenly they feel like it's some kind of human catastrophe. It's disp it's, it's despicable. It's f absolutely rancid from these people. Just, oh, I just, it's, it's completely, completely unjustifiable. Now, that is one of the bad, that's one of the kind of bad takes that we're getting 
from the from from journals in the UK, all the fucking liberal journalists who claim to be some kind of you know moderate a- adult voice in the country. Yeah, when it act when it comes down to things, they're just a bunch of fucking uh, little with the racist like everybody else, right? Right. And again, I have no means to morally impugn individuals, but this is the kind of this is the kind of cultural shit that gets shown on news networks that influences other people. If they're not going to mediate their language, it just shows like the rot. That's at the, at the core of the Western countries at this point in time. These people aren't fundamentally bad, like people from the inside. These aren't evil people. These are just people who have grown up in a culture of, you know, white supremacy. Uh, and it, this is a damning indictment on the cultures of the countries that we live in. I'm not going to try and say that these individuals are the, 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 uh, is something specific to these particular individuals because it spreads throughout society. Like, I'm a structuralist. I believe that racism is a structure that pervades through everybody, regardless of whether they think they're virtuous or not. Because, you know, anyone can anyone can fall foul to um, parroting cultural talking points that are rooted in racism. That's, it can happen to anybody. But it just so happens that these fucking liberals, the ones who are hypocritical enough that they, they think that they're, they think that they're, you know, all fucking right on, all woke and shit. But it comes down to it. They, they genuinely only really care about people on their own doorstep. Well, the amusing thing is that there is oil in Ukraine. It's in the Donbass region, and that's why Russia wants to invade, because they want the fucking oil, right? Is it, uh, Eastern Ukraine has oil deposits. That's why Russia wants to invade. Um, that, and obviously for geopolitical reasons, too. Um, but the other kind of garbage take that we're getting from, from the fucking lib, the libcuck media in the UK is this vile bullshit. War in Ukraine has exposed just how shallow and self-obsessed woke worldview really is. The whole edifice of, ident- of identity politics has created an inward-looking delusion about what really matters. These people are trying to cope so hard for Vladimir Putin, and they're trying to run their anti-woke editorials so far, they will literally justify brutal invasions which are you know, destroying livelihoods in Ukraine. They're trying to blame this on Western people being to a being too, you know, caring too much about, you know, trans people, whatever. This is fucking revolting. This is disgusting. The way in which these people will twist any 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 particular political issue to try and fit their fucking editorial line to create clicks and sell papers, it disgusts me. These people are less than human to me. I am, like, there was a spiked online article that you, it literally, you, it beggars fucking belief looking at the shit that they've been talking about. You can see they come up as red, can't you? Where was it? Brendan O'Neill, who did the fucking article. Well, they might have de- they might have deleted the might have deleted the article now. They essentially said that you know we gifted Putin. By saying that, by you, by because he hates transgender people. By our woke nonsense, we gifted him the idea of, to be able to invade the West for being decadent or whatever, or for being or um, being. That's what Russian invasion of the of Ukraine is an outrage, and it was emboldened by the incoherency and hypocrisy of the woke West because they hate trans. That's literally what these people are saying that you know, Putin can theoretically be justified because we are too woke. This is outrageous. Utterly outrageous. The Russian Russian troops being found on Grinder. Oh no! What a disaster! Fucking hell! But this this is the this is the conservative media in a nutshell, right? Isn't it? It doesn't matter what crisis is going. No matter how many people are dying, as, as long as they can use it to fit their editorial lines, it doesn't matter. Like how utterly like inhumane the fucking shit they parrot is. Utterly inhumane, and also incredibly amusing. That they are um that they are talking about the idea of, you know, talking about people being Putin whatever. Yet when it comes to something like BDS, the government is happy to crack down on protests, right? It's it's so incredibly one sided. We should talk about some kind of things people there was even talk about the government trying to trying to deport Russian students, right? In, oh, that was that. That was in the US. But even regardless, and then we got this. Our government coming coming in saying that they want to be able to ban people from opposing Israel or engaging in BDS. When 
Israel are just they're, they're like Russia in that situation. They are invaders and occupiers trying to trying to annex Palestinian territory, just in the same way that Russia are trying to an annex the Donbass region. And suddenly we're not allowed to fucking criticize them. It's so hypocritical when we should be against, again, the incursion by Israel into Palestine and the incursion of Russia into Ukraine. The level to which these people engage in of just like the most absurd cognitive dissonance just blows my fucking mind. Also, these people are saying that BDS holds them, the, 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 the creatives and businesses responsible for government's actions. Well, that's just like how sanctions work against Russia. Like, do you think that the oligarch specifically chose Putin? Well, no, but they ha there needs to be a way in which to put like, economic pressure on Russia to stop doing what they're doing, right? God, it's just so, it's so hypocritical. Like, just, like, this, con like, this country is just full of just repugnant people. Well, especially the members of the liberal commentariat who believe they're so correct in all their opinions, as I was talking about in the, in the previous segment, that they don't like the fact that they're being called out for their bullshit. Oh no, people on Twitter disagreed with me. This is cancel culture. Well, no, you, you just, you're finally now being reprimanded for your reprehensible views because there's now a public forum in which the liberal commentariat's uh, positions are being actually challenged rather than accepted as being accepted verbatim. Because now articles can be properly the water cooler talk has moved on the on online and everyone can get engaged from every political viewpoint and suddenly they don't like being disagreed with about their their you know their sacred cow opinions that they believe shouldn't be challenged yeah tough shit tough shit libs now you're gonna have to actually be able to properly justify your points rather than taking yourselves to be the arbiters of the discourse fucking hell but yeah as we have seen here there is just no the the links with which the Western liberal media will. Just I've have just kind of given up on keeping the mask on, with regards to the uh with regards to global conflict has been in, it's been exposed by by this recent conflict and again, as I said, you should absolutely impose the oppose the imperialism of Russia, but if you're going to impose the imperialism of Russia, then you should also oppose you know, the imperialism of Saudi Arabia and the imperialism of the of the of Israel in Palestine and Yemen. It's very simple. You know, if you really don't want to see children killed, then you should vote for governments that aren't going to sell bombs to Saudi Arabia. Very simple. Unfortunately, we probably have no choice on that matter anymore. Because it looks like the current Labour leadership don't care. And they probably will still end up getting selling arms to Saudi Arabia because they believe it's in the national interest whether they can do so. Because we don't have a proper fucking opposition anymore. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like, places like the... the we're getting to the point at which there are some sections of the... Um, of the alternative media that are now more truthful than you know, liberal news outlets because liberal because the kind of perverse incentives uh, of the market dynamics involved in in the way in which news uh, has to gain your attention in the attention economy it means they focused so far away from the truth so far away from objective reporting that they now have to tie what they're talking about to some kind of moral crusade why do you think people are trying to frame this war about you know east versus the woke west right because then it feeds into their moral crusade that they're engaging with the anti-work stuff. It's now they have to get people engaged in this some kind of campaign or whatever to change the culture rather than actually engaging in fact-based reporting. Otherwise, people wouldn't wouldn't bother buying their newspapers, wouldn't bother you know engaging with their fucking dead formats if they didn't have a proper moral crusade to be able to bang on about every now and then, right? Like the, the match, the the best kind of objective reporting I've seen from. From you know a news organization in the UK is fucking Navara Media and Channel Four News. These are the only places that I can get proper unbiased reporting from anymore. It's fucking crazy. Even the Guardian, even the fucking the Guardian is just full of fucking lib shits now. People like Sonia Soda who are happy to engage in a fucking trans panic, moral panic. Who will people like Sonia Soda who will um actively try and fight against proper discussions. Uh, of the way in which the liberal media will kick up an Islamophobic storm by trying to, by not even not even properly engaging with the issues that was taken in the Trojan horse scandal. And even the Guardian will do it. There's just there's just there's just no good um, legacy media outlet in the UK anymore, and they've been exposed for it. There's just no point in engaging with them. They're all they've been been absorbed by this this desire for a moral crusade to be able to add out their you know their, their dead platforms and that's going to be the way moving forward because of the perverse incentives of the market it is what it is welcome to capitalism
every single day <laughs> the predictions and the understandings of capitalism by Marx and the communists of uh, of yesteryear are being borne out further and further. The cultural hegemony that is engaged with the, the illegal media in trying to engage in has never been more has never been has never been more um, obvious now than it has ever been. Exactly. Any voice for change gets shouted down loudly and aggressively. The 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 window of political discourse is so thin now. Uh, as far as the liberal media are concerned, it's yeah. Uh, and the best thing that we can do is counter the hegemony with our own alternative media outlets, like I'm at least trying to do with my incredibly small and insignificant YouTube and Twitch channels. But you know, like, again, you're absolutely right. You, you, it's far more likely to be able to get unbiased reporting from places like Reddit. Even American news outlets, places like, places like Reuters and Associated Press, even these people, even these organisations are being more fact-based and more unbiased than, like, than the, like, the liberal newspapers and the liberal news outlets in the UK. I get a better reporting from fucking TLDR News, a YouTube channel, um, than I would get from anywhere like the, like, you know, the BBC, even, even the BBC, because they've been, rather than being corrupted by market incentives, they're corrupted by big power. But places like The Guardian, The Independent, and The Times, and The Telegraph, these are all people who've all been possessed by the desire for a moral crusade. And I'm surprised that we're not getting as much from the US, obviously we get it from Fox and CNN, but AP and Reuters have been remarkably even-handed in a lot of their reports, which is crazy, in comparison to what we get in the UK, considering these are all like capitalist-owned media outlets. We need, to be, we need someone to be trained from school to teach the political arena and surprise everyone being a decent person. Well, the issue is, is that what we need to engage in is critical thought, understanding of history, uh, and an unbiased, you know, fact-based, you know, um, uh, curriculum of history. But unfortunately, that's being clamped down on now by the by the government choosing what we can and can't teach in history classes. Like we can't teach things. We have to talk about you know people like Winston Churchill for what they're most known for, rather than the shit they actually did. We can't talk about you know all of the millions of people who died in Bengal. Because we can only we can only view historical figures like Churchill through government mandated ideas of what they should and shouldn't be known for, in case people aren't, might get the the some kind of idea that capitalism might be bad, or that the, or that liberalism might have inherent flaws that need to be protected that need to be you know fixed by some kind of socialism, right? That's why the government are having to clamp down on alternative viewpoints because they know they've been they they know they're fucking losing and they know that unless there's some kind of you know, hegemonic you challenge to contradictory ideas that it's not going to go away and it's only going to get stronger as you know young people in this country get far more and more frustrated with the world that they have been bequeathed by um a, a neurotic and greedy boomer generation again not by their own fault the boomers have just been indoctrinated by neoliberalism and thatcherism to engage in you know looking after number one mentality And that's, and that's that's exactly what we should be teaching: critical thinking, open mindedness, and the desire to challenge all viewpoints. Lee, hundred percent correct. Absolutely, hundred percent agree. Good to see. So yeah, to read a big expose on what's happened now. It's and I don't I, and and that's why I feel that something like the online harms bill, as talked about previously, has dangerous implications for online discourse. If you know, people who are in power, like the right wing, uh, and the and the liberals and the illiberals, feel like they have to control the online space to be able to deal with p things that might you new know, other ideologies that counteract their hegemony. How far is it going to go? Right, I know it's a slippery slope fallacy, but I do have my worries about where this could end up. There are, again, they're already banning anti-capitalism in schools. They're already banning teaching, um, you know, frank and unbiased histories of historical figures. Where does it stop? I really don't know. Uh, and I worry about the future in general, about these kind of things. But, you know, <sighs> capitalism, gonna capitalism. <laughs>